Chapter 22, An Incredibly Bad Idea. When I had done breakfasting, the squire gave me a note addressed to John Silver at the sign of the spyglass and told me I should easily find the plates by following the line of docks and keeping a bright lookout for a little tavern with a large brass telescope for sign. I set off overjoyed at this opportunity to see some more of the ships and seamen and pick my way among a great crowd of people and carts and bales, for the dock was now at its busiest, until I found the tavern in question. The company smell of paper, ink, and wood turned sweet to marshmallow, marshmallowy before transitioning into the much more pungent stink of fish, sweat, and the sea. Tilly wrinkled her nose as the underlibrary dissolved around them and was replaced by a bustling, smelly dock. Oscar grinned. See, nothing more dangerous then, but at the moment a gruff-looking man covered in tattoos elbowed him in the side. Out of the way, lad, he bellowed, barely giving either of them a second look. We need to find Jim, Oscar said, the boy in the story, and he should be around here somewhere. As he spoke, a skinny boy brushed past them. He was clutching a tightly rolled parchment and stared up at the buildings, looking for something. His eye caught on a swinging wooden sign decorated with a gilt telescope and set off toward it with a jog. Tilly and Oscar followed. The tavern looked like a film set. The big room was a low ceilings and was clouded with tobacco smoke. I can't believe how bad the past smells, Oscar said, breathing through his mouth. The room became quiet and groups of sailors looked up from their rum to stare at the boy who must be Jim, Tilly thought. As he made his way through to the bar, Jim hesitated but kept walking and the noise resumed around him before a door behind the bar swung open and a man emerged there's barely anything remaining of his left leg and a carved wooden peg extended from under his hip to the floor matched by the wooden crutch under his shoulder he was over six feet tall with a smiling handsome face it was hard to look away from jim swallowed and walked up to him mr silver sir he said and held out the rolled gold rolled up parchment yes my lad he replied such is my name to be sure and who may you be? He read the note and looked more intently at Jim. Oh, I see. You're the new cabin boy. Pleased I am to see you. He shook Jim's hand firmly. The boy's face was pale and his back straight. What do we do now? Tilly whispered to Oscar. You've seen enough, right? Not in, even close, Oscar said. I want to let, let see the ship. Let's stick around and try to follow them. I wondered what would happen if we skipped ahead, Tilly said. Try reading a bit later. Can we jump forward, do you think? I don't fancy hanging around here for hours. Oscar pulled the book from inside his jacket and passed it to Tilly. You look, I don't find the bit quickly enough. I can't skim read like you can, he said. But, seriously, you do it. Tilly looked down at the list of the chapter titles. Okay. Chapter 10, The Voyage. Sound about right? She took Oscar's arm and started to read. The air around them fizzed and fuzzed, but instead of finding themselves back outside the, on the dock, they were standing deep in the creaking innards of the ship itself, in a lavishly decorated room with a huge desk at its center covered by a large parchment map. The room was lined with bookshelves with pile upon pile of rolled up maps tucked in between the spines. Uh, Tilly, I just wanted to see the ship from outside, you know. I don't want to worry you, but we probably shouldn't stay here too long in case anyone sees us. I know, I know, Tilly said, flustered. I don't know anything about this book. I thought it was a... This bit was describing them getting things ready to go on board. I should never have wandered into something I've not read. This was an incredibly bad idea. It's fine, Oscar said. We can go any time we want, remember? We just have to read the end of the book. Like Seb said, and we'll go straight back to the underlibrary. Pass, pass it here. But as Oscar reached to take the book from Tilly, the wooden stairs in the corner of the room creaked, and one black leather boot and one wooden peg appeared, followed by the man wearing them, Long John Silver. What have we here, then? He said, coming toward them as Tilly held the book behind her back. Two stowaways. I'm sure you'll like where we're headed, laddies. He peered closer at Tilly. And a laddie and a lassie stowaway are we. It's fiendish bad luck to have a woman on board, so the legends go, and in the captain's quarters as well. Actually, sir, Oscar said, we've sort of ended up here by accident, so if you don't mind, we'll just get back off the boat. Silver tipped his head back and laughed, revealing a few missing teeth. 
Now, how might I ask, did you end up here in esteemed captain's private rooms accidentally? He lurched closer. Who asked you to hide away in here? No one, I promised, Tilly said. We didn't realize these were the captain's rooms. We were just... We were just exploring because Oscar likes boats, and if you just let us off again, that would be great. Thank you. Silver stepped back. Oh, why, of course, my lady, as you asked so politely. Allow me to take you wherever you're holding there to aid your way. Smiling, he offered an arm to Tilly and took the copy of Treasure Island in his other hand. Let me accompany you to the deck. Oscar eyed the book but shrugged at Tilly and followed them, unsure that what other options they had. The ship rocked in the water as they made their way upstairs. I got not got your sea legs yet, I see. Ha, 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 Silver laughed as the boat rocked on the waves between them. Tilly wobbled against him. Now here we are, just up here, there, and you two can be off and back to your... What was it you said? Oh, yes, your boat exploring. He smiled crookedly and bent into a sweeping bow. Tilly and Oscar clambered past him and final steps at deck to see the ocean stitched to the horizon with no land in sight. Chapter 23. This is why you should always follow the rules. Tilly and Oscar looked at each other in horror as Silver laughed again. Now, my lady, he said, bowing sarcastically in front of Tilly, why don't you tell your old friend John exactly why you're aboard the Hispaniola and why we found you rattling around in the noble King Smollett's rooms? He examined the book in his hand. And why might you be borrowing this tome from his private bookshelves he startled he started when he saw the title of the book treasure island an interesting book for you to have selected what do you know of the isle of treasure and i wonder what our captain knows of it to have this here book among his collection tilly and oscar stayed silent neither of them had a clue on how they might talk their way out of this not feeling talkative let me give you a little time to think while i consult with some of my associates about what to do with you might not need to involve the captain quite yet. He took each of them by their shoulder and a firm painless grip and maneuvered them back down the steps. But instead of turning toward the captain's quarters, he took them down another level into what was obviously the ship's kitchen. Welcome to my galley, Silver said. I'm just going to ask you to wait here for a moment. But I'm a kind host, you'll see. He tossed them an apple each before he led them into a cupboard stacked with casks and locked the door behind them, taking the book with him. Tilly took some deep breaths, trying to calm down. What on earth are we going to do now, she said to Oscar. What happens if he reads the book and sees his own name in there? He doesn't know it's not real. Oh my goodness, it's such a bad idea to come here, Oscar. This is why you should always follow the rules. Oscar crunched his apple loudly and Lily, Tilly looked at him exasperated. No need to get hungry, is there, he said. Okay, just give me a minute to think, Tilly said. They both stood there with their backs against the rough wood wall, Oscar crunching and Tilly pressing her fingers to her temples in concentration. Okay, okay, we need to get the book back, that's all. And we can get the book back and read ourselves out straight away, so we just have to grab it as soon as we see it. I don't think that'll go very well, Oscar said. He doesn't seem like a man who likes having his stuff grabbed, you know. But if we read ourselves out immediately, it doesn't matter if he make him cross. We just need to do it as quickly as possible. So when he comes back, then what? Silver said, opening the cupboard door. We were just hoping we could have our book back, Mr. Silver, till he said as politely as she could. I'm afraid that's not an option quite at this moment, my darling. Indeed, my friends are of the opinion that if you two aren't more forthcoming with some answers, then we'll have to enact a little sea justice. You understand it's not your old friend John's preferred manner of doing things, but sometimes it's important to uphold the illusion of democracy. We don't want a mutiny in our hands, do we? Not over a book. In fact, as the captain has just retired for his afternoon brandy, I'm going to take you upstairs to meet with some of them to see if you can satisfy their curiosity. If you follow me and there's no running off, a very few satisfactory places to hide in for long on a ship, Silver smiled. The deck was almost empty, save for a small group of distinctly unsavory-looking men gathered in a huddle. Silver coughed, and they turned to leer at Oscar and Tilly. Now, gentlemen, where's that book? Silver said as they approached. A grimy man with a dirty rag tied over his eyes staggered forward with the look in his eye, with the book in his hand, and Silver sighed. Eyeless Horace, an enlightened choice to try to discern the secrets of printed word. As always, I see that the particulars of a plan rest on my shoulders. 
I couldn't read before I lost my eyes anyway, the man said. A lot of rum will do that to a man who's useless twice over, Silver said sarcastically. Lad, if you follow me this way, he took Oscar's arm in an iron grip and led him to the side of the boat, where a plank of wood stuck out over the water. He turned to Tilly. Now, lassie, I'm going to need to know why you ended up here at the Hispaniola on this particular voyage, and why you're in possession of a book about the Isle of Treasure. As elegant as we might seem, we are not above a little encouragement to telling the truth. He said as one of the men unceremoniously picked up Oscar and put him on the plank. Silver smiled like a crocodile who spotted his dinner and leafed through the pages of a leisurely pace, pace until all of a sudden his face drained of color and he stared closely at the page. What witchcraft is this, child? He said quietly, thrusting the book into his face. What, what do you mean? She stuttered. Don't play the innocent, he whispered, pointing to a page that quite clearly showed his name several times. Where do you get this, Grimoire? Did Flint send you? Is the captain in this? Silver took a step toward her, forcing Tilly backward until she was pressed against the side of the boat where Oscar wobbled on the plank, trying desperately to keep his balance. You have one more chance remaining before you and your friend are dealt with once and for all. We may be pirates, but we'll not risk this vessel with sorcery. He took a last look at the book and then threw it overboard in a split second till he knew there was one option left. Jump! She bellowed Oscar and threw herself after the book and jumped over the side of the Hispaniola. She hit the choppy water and an ice-cold splash that momentarily took her breath away. Her clothes were immediately soaked through as she thrashed around, desperately looking for the book. She started floating a few meters from her and launched into a front crawl toward it. Waves slapped against her, rescuing it just as it started to become too waterlogged to stay on the surface. Tilly grasped and looked at us. In horrors, Oscar wobbled on the edge of the plank. You have to jump. I can't swim, he shouted down to her. As one of the pirates climbed onto the end of the plank, Oscar, you have to, she shouted. And she tried to find the last page of the book while kicking her feet to stay above the waves. Aim for me. Oscar closed his eyes with her and she nodded. He closed his eyes and... He, Oscar locked eyes with her and she nodded. He closed his eyes and launched himself off the end of the plank arms and legs windmilling through the air as Tilly splashed toward him. He landed in the water a huge splash as the pirates jeered from the boat. He surfaced but almost immediately started sinking again. We have to be touching, Tilly yelled, holding her arm out as Oscar's fingertips brushed hers as a huge grasp of, gasp of air and bellowed the last under the book. Pieces of eight! Pieces of eight! It was as if someone had pulled the plug off the ocean and suddenly Tilly couldn't breathe properly as the underlibrary rebuilt itself around them. Oscar fell to his knees, coughing up water, while Tilly pressed her forehead against the wood of the wall, letting its reassuring warm solidness anchor her back to the dry land. They both stood dripping on the carpet as Granddad appeared at the top of the stairs. Tilly kicked the nearly disintegrated copy of the book under the table. "'Why on earth are you both wet?' he asked." We fell in the sea, Oscar said without thinking. You fell in the sea on your own induction, Grandad said. We um landed in the wrong bit of a book, Tilly said. Honestly, Grandad muttered, sending new book wanderers to scenes by the sea. Standards are obviously slipping. Would never have happened in my day. Anyway, let's go. Goodness knows what we're going to say to your mom about the state of your clothes, though, Oscar. Although they got several funny looks on the train home, by the time they were back at Pages and Oscars, Tilly's clothes were mostly dry, if slightly crusted with salt. Tilly, go and get changed and see if you can find Oscar a clean t-shirt to wear, Grandad said. We'll put these things to the wash while we're chatting. Fifteen minutes later, they were sitting around the kitchen table, with Grandad putting mugs of hot chocolate and plates of toasted brioche with cherry jam in front of them. Oscar was wearing a t-shirt with the cover of Phantom of the Toll Booth printed on it. How So how did it go? Grandma asked gently. It was awesome, Oscar said, grinning. Why didn't you tell me before, Tilly said. Why didn't you tell me about the book wandering and that Granddad was the librarian? I thought you'd always lived here. Well, we've lived here a long time, Grandma said. This bookshop has been in my family for decades, and I've been in charge since my mom died years ago. But why is Archie called Pages, too? Oscar asked. Because he took my name when we got married, the same way people often take each other's names, Grandma said. We wanted to keep Paige as a name because of the bookshop's legacy, Granddad said. Not to mention what bookseller or librarian wouldn't seize a chance of such a booky surname. The history of the shop stretches way back, Grandma said. 
You come from a long line of booksellers, Tilly. Your family tree is full of them, as well as librarians and writers and readers. It's in your blood. Oscar Clitter sewed, Uh, I think I'm going to go home now and leave you guys for a bit, he said quietly, giving Tilly an awkward pat on the shoulder. Thank you for taking me today, and thank you for the t-shirt. I'll bring it back tomorrow. Grandma gave him a smile. Do come around tomorrow and we can chat further, Oscar. I know you must have more questions, and I'm sorry to be blunt, but you know you can't tell your mum about this. Like should believe me anyway.